Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here in Antarctica, actually Devil's Island, I believe, and we're going to talk about that in a second. I'm here with Sean Powell, who's the expedition leader on National Geographic's Resolution, which is a brand new cruise ship down here. Amazing ship. We've had an amazing time so far. We I can't even keep track of how many days we've been here. We still have a little ways to go, but we thought we'd take this time to talk to Sean about uh, what we've done and what the experience is like, and you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Sean, first of all, thank you so much because it's been an amazing cruise so far and we still have a few more days, but this is my first time and you've been, I was always, you'll always be the, my first expedition leader down in Antarctica. I was always remember that. But let's talk a little bit about the, where we are right now, this today. This, it is Devil's Island, right? We are at Devil Island here on the east side of the Antarctic Peninsula, and I'm delighted this is your first trip with us here at Lindblad Expeditions and National Geographic. The reason we're here today is because of the Delhi colony, first and foremost. It's this is a, the other penguin. There are two different kinds of penguins as we've been learning, right? Several down Several during, but yeah, the, but the two that we know the lot of. Yeah. The two that we've seen the most on this voyage are the Gen 2s and the Adelis, right. for sure. Tomorrow we're hoping for chin straps at our okay. final stop. But this rookery is a, it's exclusive Adeli penguins, and there are a lot of them. We're yeah, talking. We, we are walking. You sorry, you can walk right up to them. You're not supposed to get close, but you know they're getting close to you. There's not much you can do. They just keep walking along. You know. Absolutely. At this time of year, they're coming and going, and the chicks are getting big enough now, and they're getting curious, and they're chasing the parents back and forth to the sea's edge. And so, if you're sitting still or standing still, oftentimes they'll come right up to you out of their own curiosity. And they did. They were coming up to me, and I was taking lots of photos. Now, let's walk back to the very beginning of this cruise we had a relatively mild cruise across the, the infamous strait there uh, which I was very uh, you know very pleased at and it reminded me of the strait I'm sorry you're right James we the Drake Passage the Drake Passage is the the one that everybody worries about it was a lot of some swells but actually it was pretty calm we did we had sometimes we refer to it as the Drake Lake when we get that kind of lucky crossing like that but it allowed us to make fantastic speed down toward the peninsula and it enabled us to kickstart our journey down here much further south than we normally do. And we did, we started with something you said was very rare in many cases. We went through the Lamar Passage, is that right? The Lamar Channel, okay. yes. Lamar Channel, which is amazing because you had mountains and icebergs all through that channel. That we did. When we came in in that corner, we were delighted to make the, such good speed and start off our journey right there. But when we rounded the corner there at Booth Island and you look ahead and there was ice aplenty. I mean, it was almost choked, but luckily with the ship's case capabilities and our skilled captain and bridge team, we were able to navigate our way through that channel over the course of about 90 minutes pushing our way south and around the corner to our first stop at Plano Island. And then we were go we went out on, on, on the Zodiacs at that point and went really up close to the icebergs, right? We did. I like that stop because Booth Island and Plano Island create a little bit of a bowl, if you will, that catches all the icebergs that are pushed in from, from the Bellinghausen Sea. And it makes for a beautiful Zodiac cruise, as hopefully you agree, because the, all the ice changes year to year, and it looks a little bit like nature's own sculpture garden. It's sort of Dr. Seuss Wonderland, if you will. And it was. It was absolutely. And then we weren't done yet. I think we actually had a little penguin encounter to close out the day, if I remember. We sure did. We, we finished that day off with an after-dinner landing at Peterman Island, and that's where we encountered our first penguins off on foot. We had Gen 2s there, mostly Gen 2s, but even a few of these Adelis that we're seeing here today. Yeah. And then, all right, next day we wake up, and I, I'm trying to remember the next day. What was the next day we had? Well, the next day we went back out in the Bellinghausen Sea, again, taking great advantage of the good weather and the good seas. It's normally a very rough body of water, but we were able to skirt around the outer edge of it and down into Lalaman Fjord, where we were able to park the ship into the fast ice. And then we had that magnificent day into the beautiful light, walking around on the frozen ocean. And were we below the Arctic Circle then yet, or not quite yet? We sure were. Right after breakfast breakfast, if you recall, maybe a half hour to an hour after breakfast, we crossed the line into the Antarctic Circle and beyond and headed down into Lalaman Fjord. And then so we were on this fast ice, which basically means you are walking on the ocean, uh, very, very, you know, thick ice with, with snow. And
and there was a couple that actually decided to get married on the ice and I think you participated in that ceremony right we sure did somehow I was volun I was recommended and, and, and volunteered to give the bride away walking down a frozen aisle of snow and fast ice and we even made us an, an icy pulpit for the captain to perform the ceremony and she was wearing a backless dress and high heels don't get I kid you not it was really amazing I was actually up in the ship taking photos from there but it was a couple that I've met several times and I've taken a lot of the photos of them uh, and it was just an amazing way to celebrate that period uh, you know first time below the Arctic the Antarctic Circle yeah having a wedding below the Antarctic Circle their friends and all of her her future brides to be that are her companions and colleagues they're gonna have a hard time topping that one I think that's probably true if you want to think about it now I don't know about honeymooning down here but I think marrying is okay now we weren't done yet because we had to get out of there. We were surrounded by ice, right? That's right. And in this ship, we are able to do things that we haven't done in the past. That fast ice, yes, of course. We can, all of our ships have reinforcement and our captains are skilled at parking us into the ice. But what was unique about that day, as we stayed there and spent the entire afternoon on that ice, the winds were pushing the sea ice, the broken brash ice and bergy bits, into the fast ice that we were parked in. Ordinarily, we'd have to pull up and, and head on our way before that accumulation began. But because of the ship's capabilities, the amazing azipods at the stern of the vessel were able to use those and turn those in opposite directions and basically they just blow out a path on either side of the vessel so the ship can essentially do like a three-point turn as it comes out of that parking space and then gets back underway back out to open sea. Well, I remember gunning out of my out of my balcony at midnight and I looked and I'm watching all the guys on the bridge because I can see it in front of me and they're looking at this berg that looks like you know this thing could have sank the Titanic I got to tell you and we went right through it it was not a problem right well as one of our naturalists said it was like parting butter with the ship out there <laughs> we did have some soft pieces out there they were sizable but they were all pretty soft in the warm uh, temperatures that we had that day in the bright sunshine but it's also a testament to the captain's ability and the ship's capabilities we'll be talking to him later we're gonna be talking about the capabilities of the ship is amazing all right next day I, I'm trying I'm confused because then we had, I think we had a whale day that day and we woke up there were whales am I right we did you remember we went back north again we we ended up going to uh, Booth Island we did uh, we tried to do a landing there ended up doing a short zodiac cruise okay, and that's then right we went out around that's right. And we went out and around and then back, almost back where we started at the north end of the Mer Channel. Then we went to Nico Harbor. That was our first continental landing of the journey. We had more Gen 2s. Remember that really compressed landing site and all the, the penguin chicks running around. And remember we had all those Weddell seals there that day. They were yeah, there were a lot of seals. Nice. Absolutely. They were sleeping there where everyone, as a, the new campaign is a, a, an iceberg for every seal, I think, because they, they're at the... They do find, uh, you know, conspicuous spots to rest their head, it seems like. But there were a number of the seals sleeping there. Those are those deep diving seals, and they rest a lot, about 18 hours a day. So we were delighted to have such close looks at them that night. And that was great, that, that whole day. And I see, it's sort of, it, it, you're just nonstop. You're getting to see everything you want to see. Uh, and then maybe I'm thinking, it was the next day we woke up, and you're like, you got to get up because there are whales out front. And I'm saying, I'm, I was up late working, sadly. And I said, no, I, I just can't rise above. And then I got on my balcony, and there I see a whale right there. And that's so, that's right. It was the next morning, and the days do blend together. I mean, they're long daylight hours. I can't tell you what day this is. <laughs> a absolutely. And so we got up early. We were hoping to find whales in this bay, in Hughes Bay near Alcock Island. And on our approach during the night, it was foggy. We had kind of anticipated the weather was going to lift a little bit in the morning. And I was really just hoping for a good viewing of one to two whales. But we came in there, and we had whales all around us. And they were repeatedly feeding together, cooperatively feeding together to their advantage and group of three, four, sometimes six whales at a time. So we watched it for a while with the ship and they were right underneath us at times, just moving from one side of the bay to the next. And then we pulled further back away with the ship and we dropped our little fleet of black zodiacs out in pairs of two and three boats at a time and found our own little section of whale feeding activity. And it was amazing. I mean, you really got, all of a sudden, you got to watch very carefully because sometimes the whales will be in the distance. Sometimes it rises right next to you. Absolutely. You, even there were a couple of moments we were trying to pull 
pull away and you start to pull away and then another group has come up and circled in right behind you. It made for some incredible viewing. All the naturalists were completely buzzing after that morning. Well, I, I, I think the captain of the time says, well, we're working on something on the ship. You don't have to come back right away. And we did. And it was almost two hours out there. We did. We spent a lot of time out there. Of course, our hotel team came out there and met us as well. So when we left the whales, we had hot chocolate and and we're not, we're not slumming it on this ship. That's our <laughs> Which no, not, take good, good care of us. Care of. <laughs> Maybe a little too good. Again. Yeah, I know. This is the challenge <laughs> like that. I say that as I look at a, over there an iceberg. There's a seal just standing standing on the on the iceberg over there. So it's amazing. You just look out, you see wildlife. No, so that was an amazing day. And then we went to another place. I remember we went over a hill, and there were some whale bones and all kinds of stuff there. That was also really close encounters with the penguins. Don't get near the penguins, but boy, you can't help it if they come up to you. That's right. We were making our way north at that point because we wanted to get over here to this side of the continent because they're so starkly different from one side of the spine. So the, to the we other. spent the first day in the, on the, I guess it was the, the west coast of that area of the Antarctic Peninsula and now we're on the east coast, right? That's right. Yeah. So we stopped at Mickelson Harbor that night. That's where you saw the whale bones. It was the site of a shore-based whaling operation in the turn of the last century. And since it's been, as you said, overtaken with the penguins again, and there's a lot of remnants, historic artifacts from those whaling days, those bygone days, we had our, our final stop on the western side of the peninsula there that night and then we're underway and on our way around through the Bransfield Strait and into Antarctic Sound the next morning. And so uh, that's, are we up to today now? I'm, I'm blanking on this. Almost. almost. We're almost okay. there. <laughs> we're almost there. So that morning we stopped at Brown Bluff, our second continental. Which is line. a very different, why is it called Brown Bluff? Because actually you don't have as much ice on the terrain here, right? That's right. It's a, It's got some volcanic geology there, but it's also this one point that sticks out of two large glaciers to the north and the south of it. So you've got this giant brown wall there that we land underneath. And again, we found our feathered friends in the tuxedos, the gentoos, and the Adeli penguins. And, and that was a great, and they were separated. There was an Adeli community and a gento community next to it. Uh, sometimes they mix, but not much, right? They don't mix a whole lot. They tolerate one another at these sites where they're cohabitating, but mostly they're focused on their nests, their chicks at this time of year, and coming and going on their feeding forages, which also led to us to see some of the other activities and other wildlife that is taking place offshore. You remember we saw a number of leopard seals that day. We did see the leopard seals. I remember, I think I was with you and we, we saw amazing leopard seals, the one that was kind of playing with us, right? That's right. They're very curious animals, the leopard seals, and they test everything with that giant mouth they have. It's about 18 inches across from top to bottom. So it's a little unnerving when you see one being curious with you, knowing what they can do to penguins and krill and the other. He kept saying, things. you know, he's not good if he bites the boat, but he, he seemed more curious than wanting to bite it. So we were okay. That's right. And he was, they were just being kind of curious and this is a busy time for them. Those that do learn to feed on penguins they're waiting for this opportunity when the chicks first start to come and go from the beaches and that makes of course easier prey for them yeah i didn't want to see that really rough wildlife scene it would i don't know if i want to see a penguin get, getting eaten by a, a leopard seal although boy one swam by and i'm like what's this guy doing because the leopard seal's right there doesn't seem to bother them. No, if the leopard seal's sitting down or, or laying on the ice or even on the shoreline, the penguins don't pay them much bother. If they're in the surf zone and they see them, you can bet they'll accelerate quickly. Okay. Next day, what do we do? So then we headed further south into the Weddell Sea and we were looking, this area is known for the wind and we started to encounter the wind. So we were nipping into certain pockets that we thought were going to give us shelter and we went on that long zodiac cruise along the glacier faces of James Clark Ross Island and at the same time we were offering kayaking for the first time. I did see that. I didn't do it but I saw a lot of people and I have friends who really totally enjoyed it because they were out among you know some of the bergs and seeing this incredible uh, you know environment. That's right. Right. We launch them directly from the ship and they're all lightweight inflatable kayaks. They're super stable. So we do it on days that are not too windy like yesterday was and people are out for about an hour and a half each and they're paddling around the bay and it gives everyone a chance to really take it in under their own power, of course, their, their arm power and strength, but also under their own perspective and get them a, a chance to really immerse themselves into the environment. And it's absolutely. So now we're up to today.
today, right? Finally, we are up to today. So this tell us what we did today. Today uh, we've done two landings so far. That's pretty cool. That's right. We've headed a bit north of James Ross Island, and at first this morning we were on the south side of Vega Island, where we went for a landing for those who wanted to hike over this kind of alien volcanic landscape that's down. It was there. The moon. It really was the moon. It was. It was. And so some people went off and up the hillside. Others opted for a zodiac cruise along this receding glacier's front, and then along the beach as well, where we encountered what was a surprise to all of our natural history staff, a huge number of Antarctic fur seals that had come down. Yeah, you said we couldn't land because there were really too many of them, and this is probably not, you want to, you want to be among them, like the, unlike the penguins, you don't want to be with them. That's right. They're down here at the end of their breeding season, so it's, the, it's a bachelor rookery, if you will. They're all hung out together, and they're resting between feeding dives, but they can be kind of agitated. They've had a very stressful last couple of months, so landing in amongst them is going to create a lot of jockeying and testosterone-infused behavior that we don't want any part of. No, I didn't really want to go head-to-head with, with you know those seals. I mean, although it would have been cool to be walking around. You can see them. I think we saw some anyway during our little hike that were just lying on the beach, and they were we kept our distance but uh and we had seen some earlier that were really kind of active but they, they are amazing creatures as are obviously the penguins are mesmerizing i gotta tell you they are the seals are actually the main reason i started coming down to antarctica it's yeah. my favorite group of animals down here in the antarctic fur seal is a, a remarkable story of rebounding from near extinction. In fact, they were thought to be extinct in the 1915s, 1920s or so. And now we have about, we estimate around four and a half million that have rebounded and are making their living down here in the Southern Ocean, mostly in the Atlantic side of the Southern Ocean. Well, there's no shortage of seals, certainly no shortage of penguins. All right, so we're here now. We're, we're taking a look at some penguins down the beach. There were an awful lot down there. We're about ready to go back for, for our dinner and our, our talk. And uh, what, what are we hoping to do for the remainder of the cruise. So yeah, we'll finish up our landing here at Devil Island this afternoon and then we'll start sailing north again through Antarctic Sound. We'll leave the peninsula behind and then tomorrow morning we're hoping for one final stop in the South Shetland Island group. And the other thing I wanted to quickly talk about is that it's not just the landings, it's not just the zodiacs, it's not just the kayaking, but the naturalists on board every day are filling us in on what this all means and who, what's going on here, and they're fascinating lectures. And you can go to the the main lounge, uh, you know, the ice lounge, and hear them, or you can sit in your 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 stateroom and watch it on TV, right? That's right. Our broadcast team is making sure all of our presentations go out to the stateroom televisions. We have a series of presentations every day. Of course, wildlife trumps all educational material, and then we'll move out on deck and, and speak over the microphone. But we try to get you a well-rounded curriculum of educational information about the place you're visiting, visiting so that you are equipped to tell your family and friends better uh, about the locations you visited and promote greater stewardship for these unique wild places that we go to. And absolutely, that's the most important thing of coming away with some idea of what this all means sustainability wise for tourism and and Lindblad Expeditions does a tremendous job with its team with your team of explaining all this because uh, and I think most people who come aboard are interested in genuinely but until I got there was a lot of stuff I didn't know uh, I certainly didn't know what the aspects of An Antarctica were and now I think I walked away with a, a really better understanding of all this so it's fantastic I will miss your dulcet tones every morning at about 7 45 8 o'clock waking us up to alert us to the events of the day I, I mean how am I going to wake up now? Well, my wife says that she you get used to not hearing it. <laughs> so I think, you, I think you'll probably go back to normal life uh, pretty soon. But it's been a pleasure having you on board, James. And we love having anyone come down here and join us in Antarctica. It's one of my favorite destinations on the planet. Well, Sean, again, I want to thank you because you've been excellent. It's, it's just, your team is great. It's a great introduction for me to Antarctica. And really, and you're, getting, you're getting a sense here of what and our Antarctica cruise really is. I mean, Lindblad knows how to do it. They've been doing it forever. I mean, they're one of the longest operator down here. And uh, I mean, a lot of other people are getting the market and I'm sure they're gonna do a great job too, but you guys do a fantastic job. Thank you very much. It is, our, it is a passion of ours from the captains all the way down to the natural history staff, the deckhands, everyone is switched on. It's an expedition focused company. This is what we do. It's what we've been doing for over 50 years. And we hope to see you again down here. I'm James Schillinglaw from Devil Island here in Antarctica, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>